Welcome to our online. Now let's take a look at some derivatives of natural logarithms. Short, in short, we call them natural logs. And so let's start with the most simple function. Take the derivative of the natural log of x. Now the proper way of handling that is to say we have the natural log of some function of x. In this case, for the first example, that function is simply x. But the way you do that is you write it as 1 over the function of x times the derivative of that function of x. So let's go ahead and do that. We already know that the derivative of the natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. But let's use this technique to see if we get the same result. So this is equal to 1 over the function of x, so 1 over x, times the derivative, times the ddx, of the function of x. Now, of course, the ddx of x is simply equal to 1, so this becomes equal to 1 over x times 1, which is 1 over x. That's, of course, what we expected to find. But notice, that's how we want to think about taking the derivative of the natural log of a function of x. If that function is now x squared, we'll use the same technique as before, we do the same thing, so we write this as 1 over x squared, that's the function of x, times the derivative of that function, which is x squared. And of course, the derivative of that is 2x, and so this becomes equal to 1 over x squared times 2x. Notice that this x cancels out one of those, and this leaves us with 2 divided by x. So that's the derivative of the natural log of x squared. There's another way in which we could have done that by employing some of those rules of logarithms that we learned. We know that the natural log of x squared can be written as 2 times the natural log of x. So this would then be the ddx of 2 times the natural log of x. And that means that 2, since it's a constant, can be taken outside. So this is equal to 2 times the ddx of the natural log of x. And of course, this we know how to do because that's the same as the example over here, which now becomes 2 times 1 over x, which is equal to 2 divided by x. So that's the same result that we got before, but with a different methodology. Now let's take the derivative of the natural log of ax. Again, we're going to use this technique right here. So this becomes 1 over that function of x, which is ax, times the derivative, the ddx, of a times x. And of course, the derivative of this is equal to a. That becomes equal to 1 over ax times a. The a's cancel out, so this becomes equal to 1 over x. That's kind of interesting. You can see here that the natural log of a constant times x is the same as, or I should say the derivative of the natural log of a constant times x is exactly the same as the derivative of the natural log of x. Now we can show you why that is so by using a different technique right here. So what we're going to do here again is use one of those uh, rules of logarithms that if we take the natural log of a product, we can write that as the sum of two natural logs. So this can be written as the ddx of the natural log of a plus the natural log of x. Now the natural log of a, that has to be a constant because a is a constant. So now when we take the derivative of that, we simply get 0. So this is equal to 0 plus the derivative of the natural log of x, which is 1 over x, and so this becomes simply equal to 1 over x, the same result as before. But you can see when we use this technique right here, when we break it up into the sum of two natural logs, you can see that the first one goes to 0 when we take the derivative, and you get the same result. And that's how it works.